we are so back discussing more split monster possibilities. Now that we've discovered the potential of Horse of the Florinites and Crawler Soma, a new challenger has entered the chat. A new player in the legacy of Flip Monsters is now Predaplant Orphis Scorpio. And I feel a little goofy for not realizing how strong Orphis Scorpio would be earlier simply because its ability to 1.5 card combo into a guaranteed search for instant fusion is way more uh, efficient as a modern day combo compared to Florinites and Soma, which are kind of like hoping you draw both in the same hand. And that's not to say Crawler Soma and Horse of the Florinites are bad cards, but they're not very consistent cards, right? You, you're kind of hoping that you draw them. Um, Horse of the Florinites, the only way to search it is with Shield Bearer, and if you Shield Bearer search Florinites, then Florinites cannot search another beast type to fusion with. And the only, I think, real way to search Soma other than Small World is Resonance Insect, but I couldn't find a way to resolve Resonance Insect off of a normal summon, right? So I can't just play three Resonance Insect, link off into Solomon Great Almirage, search Soma, because Soma's just going to be stuck in hand. Amirage is a link monster, it can't go face down. You would need an extender plus resident insect. And at that point, it's just too much input for so little output. And I'm gonna keep it real with you guys. Like the crawler stuff is great. Don't get me wrong, but it's only an extender combo. It's not the main combo. Last time we covered an array of different flip monsters that could potentially be interesting or effective at either locking the opponent out of their turn or giving you more uh, resources or something that does both, like Pot of the Forbidden, which can either hand loop them or Regeki, Fetter Duster, or help you get a Pot of Greed. It's a really amazing flip monster. And the MVP of last video, which was Guard Dog, literally the flip monster that locks your opponent out of a turn, is still going to be very much featured in this video as well. There's over a hundred different flip monsters in the game of Yu-Gi-Oh! and we've barely scratched the surface in the first video and i think this video is going to round out not just issues that people may have had with the last video where i didn't have deck profiles because i knew i wasn't really touching the apex or I wasn't anywhere near the apex yet whereas in this video we're gonna see a bunch of new flip monsters in this video not just orphus scorpio but even goats like the scape ghost and at as you're probably reading its effect where it can flip and summon any number of tokens that is not once per turn. I'm sure you guys can start to imagine how much we can get off of certain flip monsters like this. There's also D-Boys, one of the most iconic flip monsters which we didn't get to use much in last video. And there's a lot more where that came from. I really appreciate how much love you guys have been showing me on the past video. I didn't think a funny little video about Master of Ham and the potential Combos that I saw with this card would get me so much attention and so many followers, but I appreciate all you guys. Without further ado, let's just get right into it. So as you guys can see, now that I'm showing you guys the full profile here, this theory is evolving. The extra deck is evolving, the side deck is evolving, there's way more going on here now. We're going to showcase a few more interesting ways that you can use the Flip Monster engine, not just for a flip based deck now i think because of orphis scorpio we will now be able to use flip monsters for engines in decks that aren't even based around flip monsters now the flip monster engine is sort of becoming its own thing kind of like how the super heavy engine was a thing i think the flip monster engine may become its own thing if some of these combo lines are strong enough to be mixed with other engines right or if there's enough synergy between uh, a flip monster and your dex engine, you may be able to use Orphus Scorpio to utilize your dex engine to its full potential. So I think starting it off simple, every Orphus Scorpio combo is a 1.5 card combo because you have to send a monster from hand to graveyard, which means A, it doesn't work under shifter, but B, you need another card in hand, right, to, to make it work. So you will see most, if not all, the combos start with two cards in hand. It's not a true one card combo, it's 1.5 card, but yes. Also, don't mind the mighty, <laughs> the 92 card deck, all right? Uh, because we are, we are going to be gaming 
a lot and so i was just using the same list to to, to, to practice a lot of different combos but don't worry there are going to be deck profiles for a lot of these lists so by utilizing uh, Orphus Scorpio, we get to summon Darling Tonya Cobra. When Cobra is summoned by the effect of a Predator Plant, you get to add a Polymerization or Fusion spell card from deck to hand, meaning instant fusion is now searchable. We can then link off our two Predator Plants into Cross Sheep, and that is the perfect time because now we can use instant fusion to summon a fusion to its link arrows. Uh, Ham will trigger, and then Cross Sheep will trigger. Cross Sheep will revive an Orphus Scorpio, and then Master of Ham will be able to summon you any flip monster from deck. Now, the cool thing about this is that this does chain block uh, to stop Ash Blossom on Master of Ham, but I mean, if they had Ash Blossom, they should have used it on Orphus Scorpio. Like, let's be real. So now we get to set our prediction princess Bibble. You, you probably remember from last videos. Uh, sorry to the one guy who told me to call her something else. I I just like calling her Bibble. I'm sorry. Uh, now we get to go into Borogard, right? So we have a direct route into Borogard plus any flip from deck now. So the world's our fucking oyster, right? Like we can do anything now that we can get Borogard plus any flip monster in the game off of just the one card. So now with Bibble, we get to search our Terror Wraith. Um, and I think I mentioned Terror Wraith at the end of the last video, not uh, Terror Wraith wasn't in any of the combos. It's really interesting because Terror Wraith is a ritual monster and a flip monster, meaning we get to ritual summon it in face down defense and it has a flip effect all the way at the bottom. Now, uh, Bibble will be able to bring herself back because he was, she was tributed, but this doesn't look all that crazy, right? Like it's just two sets plus a Borogard. I mean, Borogard can only flip up one of them. So what's the most we can really get off of this? And I think the answer is with Terror Wraith. So Terror Wraith, when she's flipped, she gets to summon any flip from deck and face down defense. And there goes our MVP guard dog because Terror Wraith also has the effect to flip all monsters you control, uh, either all face down monsters face up or all face up monsters face down. It actually, it's not all your monsters, it's any number. So you can do either all at the same time or just one at the same time, but it only affects your monsters. So the trade-off between Terror Wraith and uh, Terror Ray, which was the one that we used last time, is that Terror Ray really only works out of hand and graveyard, but it's a quick effect that can target any monster on field. Whereas Terror Wraith is a flip and that can be flipped up to dig you for more flip monsters, and it can flip up those monsters in the same turn. So it's like, do you want to dig from deck or do you want a resource loop with the terror with the terror ray? So now we get guard dog, we get bibble, and now we get to search our terror ray, and um, our opponent's locked out a special summoning for the turn. So uh, most likely the best that they could do is maybe hit over a guard dog. Uh, but that that would be about it, right? So now we still get to go uh, prediction rit uh, ritual uh, Get into our terror ray bibble gets to come back and at this point you can terror ray flip up your own bibble and You know add more rituals and you'd probably be able to swing for game assuming your opponent only had like one Could only summon like one monster before guard dog completely ruined their turn and the fact that like you you don't have to wait until main phase to do the terror wraith um, flip is great as well because now that means like they don't even get to summon something like Fenrir as their first action in main phase because they're locked out of special summoning. All they get is a normal summon and that would be it, right? And you would have at least uh, three to four other cards in your hand to uh, play with as well to link up into Apo or things of that nature. So continuing on into monsters we didn't use last time, right? Predator Plant Orphus Scorpio, guess what? It's a plant type monster, which means Lone Fire gets to normal tribute into Orphus Scorpio, and that's still full combo, right? So now we have six copies of Scorpio, right? And then we get to go Cobra, Cobra Search Instant, Cross Sheep, right? Same deal. This time, though, Cross Sheep gets to bring back the Lone Fire Blossom, and that's actually really interesting because. Lone Fire is not a hard once per turn, meaning Lone Fire can activate again. This time we're going to be summoning the Summoner of Illusions with the Master of Ham, and it's a really interesting uh, flip 
right, that I mentioned at the end of the last video as well, because it can tribute another monster and special summon a fusion monster from your extra deck, um, but it's destroyed during the end phase of the turn. Now, what kind of fusions can you summon? You can summon out Naturia Exterio, but, uh, you know, if you try to go for a fusion that can be destroyed by card effects, it'll just go away at, at the end of the turn, so there's no point of flipping it during your turn. But... If you want to flip it up during your opponent's turn and summon something like Naturia Exterio to negate everything and then, you know, let Exterio go away during the end phase, it'll really only work if your opponent plays into it. It's basically just like a weaker version of Guard Dog, uh, even with um, a fusion like Last Warrior from another planet, right? So when it's summoned, it destroys all other monsters you control, which funny enough, uh Borogard actually plays around because a Borogard can't be destroyed by card effects. So if you were to summon Last Warrior off of uh Summoner of Illusions while Borogard is on field, Borogard won't be affected. But what also won't be affected is your opponent because this will only stay on the field for a single turn. During the end phase, Summoner of Illusion will destroy your last warrior from another planet. So what is your best bet in terms of fusion to summon? Red Eyes Dark Dr uh, Dragoon is actually the best target to bring off of Summoner of Illusion, simply because it can't be destroyed by card effects and its its effects are live, um, regardless of, is it, of if it's properly fusion summoned or not. So now we can Lone Fire summon out Spore. And when I was theorying this out, I was like, dude, there has to be some sort of plant monster that can flip or do something. And literally the only one was like a Rosemary Jasmine and you're, and you have to be gaining life points or I think your life points have to be higher than your opponent. And it doesn't flip monsters up. I think it just flips them face down actually. I believe that's how, it, uh, and it wasn't Jasmine. It, it was one of the other ones. It, it, it was a blue one, the blue one that's like level four. And so there was nothing that, that like interacts with our face down monsters. That is a plant monster that we could use in, in our deck. But I, f I came to figure out Spore is actually really good because it can bring itself back from Graveyard. So after we link it off into a Boregard, Spore can just banish um, either a Lone Fire or one of your Pride of Plants to bring itself back. And then we can use Boregard to flip up Summoner of Illusions and now we have the body to tribute. Let me go into Red Eyes Dark Dracoon, right? And boom, uh, we have a free negate, right? Now, this is just to show off that Summer of Illusion works. Obviously, Guard Dog would be a better card here. Just simply locking our opponent out of a turn is stronger than Dragoon, which can be interacted with, uh, which can be baited and like interacted with. Um, Guard Dog is a lot harder to deal with unless they hard open in perm. So, what other kinds of decks can utilize this Predator Plant Orphus Scorpio combo? Well, what if? This is the new engine for milling. What if Orphus Scorpio is the new mill engine? Because what if we can bring out something like Magical Merchant? And shout out to the one guy in the comment section who uh, mentioned this card to me, because I would I would not have like theoried this out um, in this video if this guy didn't mention it. It probably would have been in in the next video if there is a next one. <laughs> Uh, because there's plenty of flip monsters, so I, I'm sure there's more flips that we can go through even after this. But yeah, so Magical Merchant, um, on flip, it gets to excavate the top cards of your deck until you reach a spell or trap card. You add the spell or trap to your hand, then you send everything else to the grave. This is basically like a backwards version of like Monster Gate or like Reasoning, um where you, you can essentially mill like half your deck until you get uh, a, a specific kind of card and then you add that card to your hand. Um, there are plenty of engines that can really utilize a card like this and that can get away with playing low spell and trap card counts to make this card work in their list. So now Borgard flips up the merchant and merchant just starts going to town. We see Tears, we see Light Sorns, Infernoids are another deck that can utilize it. Uh, zombies are could could utilize it. More Light Sorns. Uh, shufflers. Shadows. 
And now we've reached a hidden city. And we've just milled 30 cards. Like, this is that grass looks greener on steroids. Because this is way easier to play and access than that grass looks greener as well, right? So we had a bunch of triggers go off, right? So we have like Light Sworn, we have Shadows, we have uh, Tear Limits start fusing. And then we have, you know, uh, the Punishment Dragon, the or the the, the new Light Sworn support. Well, when it's milled, it can search uh, Judgment Dragon, right? So this isn't really a combo per se, right? Because r mills are always random. But this is kind of just to show how much you could potentially get off of resolving a single Magical Merchant. You know, you can make a Toad possibly. And because you go Master of Ham in the combo, you can even make a Dragosapelia with some of your tier names. Um, you know, you can use Lightsorn, you know, find a little Lightsorn deck, and then you can um, link off into a second Beauregard in the same turn. Um, and then Shadow, right? Shadow can dig you for um, a card like Schism. Infernoid can, can summon themselves back from the graveyard. And with the new Infernoid support that's coming out of the uh, dual terminal Battles of Legends set, a lot of that support isn't really, doesn't really work that well with the Wanted engine, but rather it's better as a mill deck. And us here in TCG, we don't have Grass, we don't have uh, Triple Monster Gate, we don't have Triple Reasoning. This might just be the tech for Infernoids if you want to play a mill-based variant of your deck, you know? Just cut out a lot of the spells and traps, you know, like play like, play like the bare minimums, uh, just for just the ones that are like searchable and stuff and magical merchant could probably mill you plenty of cards if it actually resolves which could be really interesting right so we have zombies right and uh one really interesting thing that i didn't really think about last video but i started working a lot more with now is that zealantis can not just link off of a single Boro Guard, but Zealantis can also revive monsters in face down defense. Meaning, if you have a flip that's not once per turn, you could potentially go Boro Guard again and then flip the monsters back up, right? Because that's two plus one plus one, and then we could go flip up Scape Ghost again. But yeah, that was not really a serious replay. That was more just to show you guys like exactly the vast amount of engines that could utilize these combos and these lines and these flip cards to make their decks stronger or make their decks more efficient. That's one thing that I think is really important and that I really wanna bring the point home on is that yes, your deck may actually be able to use or for Scorpio. So here's another deck, right? And also if you open Lone Fire plus Orphus Scorpio, I think it's just better to summon the Orphus Scorpio uh, because, you know, cross sheep. So now we go ham, cross sheep, get Lone Fire. Now we get the cheap, cheap, cheap. Little cheap over here on flip can summon any level five or higher tuner from your deck. So I'm sure you guys can figure out uh, what tuner, right? And now we're doing Lone Fire into Spore again because we want the extra body. We go Boar Guard, we flip up the cheap. And what does cheap do? Cheap summons the Visa Star Frost. Now we go Zealantis. And the really great reason why we go Zealantis here is not even to reset the cheap, cheap, cheap because that kind of doesn't matter. We're doing this so that we can clear the extra monster zone without sacrificing actual resources and go Lightheart because Lightheart has to be summoned to the extra monster zone to get the search for the field spell. Meaning Zealantis is a necessary like line here to make sure that the Scareclaw half of the engine goes through. But once you get to Lightheart, right, it all plays itself, Reichphobia. And Reichphobia is actually a really interesting card in a flip deck because the effect that if three or more defense monsters are on field, you get to pop one card on field once per turn might actually come up. And then like your your opponent's monsters lose attack for each defense monster on field. So it could be a really interesting way to actually use a flip deck like Scare Claws, right? Even though Scare Claws themselves are not the most flip friendly, 
if you mix them with like a few flip cards here and there, like cheap, 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 other flips of, of that nature that like really synergize with the deck, you may be able to get something new and interesting out of it. So we go Rykart, Rykart, go Arrival, Arrival, search, get back the Visus. We do Spore here um, so that we can get Lightheart off the field, just so we can utilize Lightheart's Revival before we uh, send off the Visus for something like a Baron. If I was a better player, I probably could have made, I probably could have made Borgard flip up the cheap, 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 um, summon out a level eight tuner or something from deck and then either make like Ultimaya or I could have kept Spore on field to go for something like Crimson Dragon, Crimson Dragon, Target Baron, Bestial Dissipator, Dissipator Revive, either your Visus or something else. But I chose to go a much simpler route, which I still think is pretty effective. And it's not like Scareclaw needs help doing this if they can just pull off the combo, but most times like Scareclaw starting out with like just a Reichhardt or just, you know, usually Visus isn't like always in their opening hand but now you have a guaranteed way to get visas out of your deck is a lot more uh direct right it's 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 like guaranteed and you still get like the same difference at the end of the combo so i just thought this was an interesting utilization of a flip monster like cheap 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 i was thinking about playing this and maybe in something like synchron it just there there weren't a lot of level five or higher tuners that were really like inspirational or that had like in-depth routes as visa starfrost does and i think uh, the Scareclaw variant is like the easiest variant you can use off of a single Visus because Lightheart is just way too convenient to like not use. So let's go back to our roots, right? Let's just go straight up Master of Hand plus Book of Tayo, right? For a second, just indulge with me here for a second. And, uh, you know, we're, we're, we're back on Subterra, we're back on Book of Tayo because there was one flip that we didn't use last video that I felt like deserved its own showcase. And I feel like this may not be the best deep boys combo but i wanted to make a deep boys combo nonetheless because i feel like d boys deserves his own combo uh showcase so we go instant plus tayo now we get our triple d boys now we're gonna link two off to go into behemoth fiendus which is you know perfect right because it's a sub terror and we're playing hidden city to grab our guru we didn't use our normal summon, right? Because these were two spell activations, so we can just set the Guru. Hidden City can actually just flip up Guru for free, meaning we'll be able to trigger Fiendus' effect to search before we use its effect to mill, effectively making the card twice as strong as you would normally, right? Because normally you have to mill first, set one, and then find a way to flip. But if you already have that set card in a way to flip it, like in a sub terror deck per se, then this card is like twice as strong. So now we search one with uh, with Guru to get Fiendus and we search the MVP of Flip Monsters, Guard Dog with uh, Behemoth uh, Fiendus. And then uh, Behemoth Fiendus can summon out the Guard Dog from hand by milling Shadow Squamata. And Squamata is really interesting because Squamata, when it's uh, sent to the graveyard by a card effect, it can send any other Shadow card from our deck to the graveyard and we're gonna mill the rest Shadow Incarnation which will come up next turn. Now we get to link off into our Borgard, and because all of our D-Boys are flips, Master of Ham gets to come back by banishing two of our D-Boys, and now we pass turn. We may not have used Borgard's effect during our turn, but it doesn't matter much because we will be able to use Borgard to flip up our own Guard Dog. And now this time we can do it during whatever phase that we're in because if they have something like an Imperm, we can just Behemoth Fiendus, whatever negate they have for the Guard Dog, and we should be uh, good to go. And the guard dog's gonna resolve. And then we have like Rest Shadal Incarnation, which can actually flip up Master of Ham to get us any flip monster from our deck, right? So something like Pot of the Forbidden, now that they're locked out of playing, Pot of the Forbidden can, you know, sort of checkmate them in a way. I was supposed to use Guru here, right? To Or I was supposed to use Fiendus to like negate something, but I forgot. But basically, since they can only get the one normal summon, the Hidden City actually has a really cool effect, right? So after you negate something, Fiendus is gonna put the Guru face down, and then if they attack, you can flip the Guru back up to negate one attack with the Hidden City, meaning that's the one attack of the one monster that they probably normal summoned, which is perfect. Your guard dog basically can't get attacked at all, and, and you'll be able to get another search off of the Guru. You'll most likely win the game from there. We are creating like almost FTK-like game states 
off of these flip cards and I'm I, I'm just here for it, right? That was the D-Boys combo. <laughs> Shout out to that other guy in my comments who mentioned uh, the Rush It All incarnation line off of the Behemoth Fiendus. You could send the the Shout All that summons Hedgehog from deck and then flip up Hedgehog and search out Schism, but if you're going for Guard Dog anyway, why not get the extra flip in graveyard, right? So I think this is this is a really cool line that you can use in a flip deck. It just clearly drawing one of these would really suck. But otherwise, I mean if you can if you can mill them both off of Fiendus, like you're gonna be gaming. So last time I kind of criticized Tedangle archetype for being a little too slow, a little too clunky, and a little too awkward with this new flip support, but I was just uninformed. I was just uneducated. I didn't know what I was talking about, and I formally apologize to all the Tendangle players out there because we have some sauce today. We have some real sauce today, right? Tendangle gets pretty saucy. So, Scorpio combo, right? Scorpio plus another monster equals Borgard plus any flip. Tendangles now adding into the fray. This isn't actually a four card combo, right? You really just need Tendangle Hurlf. I, I think you don't pronounce the J, you just try to pronounce the name without the J. I think that's how you actually pronounce it. Hurlif and then Orphus Scorpio. That's all you need, right? So it's basically like a 2.5 card combo. Like you do need to discard two cards total, but it's really just Orphus uh, Scorpio plus the Hurlif. So Scorpio summon, right? We've seen this before. So now before we actually go for instant fusion, we're going to use Hurlif's effect, right? We discard another card from hand. We send a Tendangle card from deck to grave, and then we summon it in face down defense. And that's gonna be really important because the one that we milled, a Tendangle Intruder, is actually gonna trigger in graveyard when we resolve Master of Ham. So we want it set up in graveyard before we, before we resolve our instant fusion. Now we're gonna go Cross Sheep, and we're gonna go instant. Summon out our Ham, resolve Cross Sheep. Summon Scorpio and then summon out our Tendangle Protector from deck. On res, Intruder has to trigger, right? This is this is not an optional effect. When a monster is summoned face down, it has to summon itself back in face down defense. This is not optional. So we have three sets and we have a route into Beauregard. And you know, it's simple math, you know, but Beauregard only gets to flip up one monster. Well, that won't be the case if the one you're flipping is Tendangle Protector, because Protector gets to change up to three face down defense from monsters you control to face up defense, which means you get to potentially trigger up to three to four flips at the same time. And then if all the monsters that you flip are Tendangles, you can add up to that many Tendangle cards from your deck to your hand. So we have two other sets here, and they're both Tendangle monsters, which means we will get to search two Tendangle cards uh from our deck to our hand so the two that we're gonna add here are angel and our base gardener now base gardener doesn't really work normally but when it's searched mid combo it works wonders and angel is actually really interesting as well because angel can um summon any flip monsters from hand or grave and then if it's the opponent's battle phase it actually just straight up ends the battle phase so if you can flip it at the right time, it can not only extend you, but it can protect you as well. So now we get our Hurlif and we get Intruder, both of which uh, will search. So Intruder gets to search any Tendangle card from deck to hand, and Hurlif gets to add any Flip Monster from deck to hand. And at this point, we have utilized just about every useful card in the Tendangle engine that is in the main deck. There's only like two Tendangle cards that we are not using in this combo, and that's because one of them isn't a flip, and the other one just doesn't have a good effect uh, because the other one just searches Base Gardener. And it's like, we can search Base Gardener without it. So now Hurlif gets to add us our Guard Dog, right? And now that we have the MVP, we know what we're going for. So we go Zealantis here. And yes, although Zealantis has the option to set our Tendangles again, we're not going to do that. Why? Because we had to clear the extra monster zone to make Behemoth Fiendus, right? Behemoth Fiendus, both of its effects rely on it pointing to the monster that flips or that it summons from hand. So it has to be able to be in the extra monster zone to be useful. So now we're gonna use Behemoth Fiendus, summon out our Tendangle angle, uh, 
angel <laughs> from our hand by milling our Tendangle Doles. And Doles is really interesting because Doles, when it's sent from hand or deck to grave, it gets to summon back a Tendangle from graveyard. And we're summoning out Protector again, right? Protector is really interesting, right? It can flip up other monsters. So we can get multiple flips off of just one flip so that when we go for Beauregard, this can be a good way to trigger all of our flip effects at the same time. So now we're going to summon out Base Gardener, right? So it can summon itself from hand when you control it face down defense. And then it can be used to summon more Tendangle monsters from a hand or deck when your opponent summons a monster to a Link Arrow. But we're not going to be doing all that. What we're going to be doing instead is we're going to be going Beauregard. Beauregard flip up Angel. Angel summons out the Guard Dog in face down defense. Now we get to go for IP Mascarena. And the reason why we had to do it this way is because if we kept Zealantis on field, IP cannot use Link Monsters. So we had to get two non-Link Monsters on field to resolve our Mascarena. Now we get to go Master of Ham. Master of Ham gets to summon itself face down because we can banish any two flip monsters from our grave, which basically every Tendangle that is not Base Gardener is a flip. I don't know why Base Gardener isn't a flip. I mean, it, they should have just made it a flip, right? The whole deck's flip. Just make this card a flip card, but it's cool, right? We have more than enough flips to banish. Uh, we also still have more than enough to resolve our Tendangle Luane, which I haven't talked about yet. And there's a good reason why I haven't talked about it, because this card is, like, not that great. But it's really funny if it's set up correctly. Past turn here, and we're ending turn with Ham, Protector, and Guard Dog all set in the same field. Now, for this scenario, we're going to want to wait until main phase. So our opponent's going to get one action before we start popping off. So they chose the Orphus Scorpio, right? We're going to go Beauregard, flip up our uh, Tendangle Protector. Now, Protector is really interesting because it's going to be able to flip up our other two face downs. And then we're going to chain the IP Mascarena, right? So IP is allowing us to link summon during our opponent's turn. What monster do you think we're going to summon? Beauregard. Beauregard is not once per turn. So now we have Guard Dog flip and Master of Ham flip. They're both going to trigger. Master of Ham summoning out a pot and Guard Dog locking them out of their turn. Now, new chain. Uh, Doles is... Not Doles. Intruder is going to trigger in Graveyard because we summoned a monster and face down defense. And then we can use Beauregard to flip up our pot of the Forbidden. They're already locked out of special summoning. Now we can hand loop them for one. And look at how much we've gotten off of just Orphus Scorpio plus a Herlif. Summon lock, hand loop for one, and we've got amazing follow up for next turn with Intruder, Beauregard, and we have, uh, you know, plenty of bodies on field. It's very likely that, like, we will not be, that we can get the game next turn, right? We have more than enough bodies, more than enough uh, attack on field. We, we may not be able to protect ourselves from a single attack from Orphis, but at least we're playing pretty effectively. And I also love, like, Beauregard, it, it you know, shows a little asterisk, cannot be destroyed by your opponent's card effects because you use IP to make it, but it can't be destroyed by card effects anyway, so it's a little funny. This trap card right here, I, I don't think it's good, but... The awkward thing of, about a lot of the Tindangle spell and trap cards is that none of them actually have the name T Tindangle in them, except for this one. The rest of them are all just called like random things. You know, like the field spells called something random, like circuit or something, then the stairs of mail. It's all just a bunch of random bullshit. So this is the only spell and trap card that's searchable in the engine. And it has a really good graveyard effect, right? If you control no monsters in extra monster zone, you could banish this card from graveyard, target three Tindangles, with different names and then some of them all in face down defense which means you get to potentially survive a drastic board wipe and then use this at any point in the game to just get back your tendangles from graveyard and after play testing a lot of this tendangle support i'm starting to realize like this is just a really i can't even say like unsupported archetype it's just a really like unexplored archetype i just think like more people should try playing um, some of these cards to see what they can like get with them because this is a really interesting uh, 
setup that we have here. Like, we have everything that we want, right? We have the guard dog. We've gotten a second flip from deck, which we've chosen Pot of the Forbidden. We have amazing follow-up, and we got everything that we need off of one Orphus Scorpio and one engine card, and that was it. That was everything that we needed to set all of this up. So, really cool stuff. Now we're getting into even more right there's there's more right like we <laughs> don't don't mind the 80 card deck this is this is simply just uh because i was theoring this i sort of came across this by coincidence right because last time in the video i mentioned right symphonic warriors have the one flip monster they only have one flip monster in the whole archetype but you have this pendulum card that can flip up face down symphonic warriors so i just thought it was really interesting and I just had to explore what the possibilities are. And this is what I came up with. Now, this is a another 2.5-ish card combo, right? Because you need the one discard off of Orphus Scorpio um, and just a DJJ, DJ Professor J. It's a DJ that is a radio, Jet Set Radio. So DJ Professor J over here gets to flip up our set Symphonic Warriors for free on Pendulum Scale. And then he even gets to follow up because if the Symphonic Warrior monster effect is activated, he gets to summon himself. And then after he's summoned, he gets to summon more Symphonic Warriors from deck. So I'm like, wait a minute, I need to try this shit out. So let's let's go, right? Same start as, as before, right? We, we only have these two other cards in hand just to show what this combo would look like in a five card hand. This, that's the only reason why we have these two other cards in hand, right? But normally this is a 2.5 card combo, right? So, starts the same way. Ham, cross sheep. This time, hold the cross sheep. Don't use the cross sheep just yet. It's going to be really important for later on. So, Ham, bring out the one Symphonic Warrior uh, flip monster, which is Symphonic Warrior Synthes. Activate DJJ. DJJ, you know, uh, flip up Synthes, and then when Synthes is flipped up, it gets to add Symphonic Warrior Guitar R, which, first off, where the fuck named some of these Symphonic Warriors? We're, we're just gonna need to fucking talk, because it's only gonna get more ridiculous for me here. Um, so Guitar R, uh, if you guys remember around the time that Brilliant Fusion got banned, Guitar R was, like, the next cope for the second normal summon. It's, like, Nightmare Goblin got hit, Brilliant Fusion got hit, uh, so Guitar R into Symphonic Warrior Mikes was the way to get a second normal summon. And now we actually get to use it in a Symphonic Warrior deck. I don't think Symphonic Warrior decks were even much of a thing before this, but this showcase should show you that a Symphonic Warrior deck is more than possible in 2024. So DJJ will trigger, right? Because Synthes triggered and activates effects. Now DJJ gets to trigger and summon itself. When DJJ is summoned, it gets to summon a Symphonic Warrior from deck and face down defense, meaning we get another Synthes. Read Synthes really quickly and you'll find there is no hard once per turn on this card, meaning if we can flip it up multiple times in a turn, it will get its effects every single time. So we will get to add a lot of Symphonic Warriors from deck to hand using this uh, combo line. Girgigant X, search us a machine and we, you have to detest the DJJ here. That's actually really important. There's a reason why, because you want to revive this. Guitar R, right? So let's drop the card that we just searched to summon our, our mics. It's just a nigga made out of mics. Bunch of mics. There you go. Now, mics, his on summon effect is that you get an extra normal summon this turn. That's not, that, that doesn't trigger. That just, once he summoned, that effect is, uh, continuous basically but cross sheep will trigger because it was summoned to uh cross sheep's link arrow while it was pointing to a master of ham we get to bring back our bases and then we get to link up into Borogard. and Borogard's great because now flip up get us another search now we're gonna search the guitar wrists and this is the only like well-named symphonic warrior right because guitar wrist like guitarist it's the only one I feel like is named properly. The rest of these just have stupid ass names or more like Guitar Riz. <laughs> anyway, uh, Guitarist, right? The reason why you go into this is his pendulum effect. 
is that he targets another Symphonic Warrior card you control, and then he bounces both himself and the other Symphonic Warrior card back to hand. So, Guitar Riz can bounce back your Symphonic Warrior Guitar R, and because of our second normal summon with Mike X, we get to go for Guitar R. Guitar R is going to summon back our DJJ. DJJ, no effect, but we're gonna activate our Guitar Riz for another time here, and that's because of a funny interaction with Symphonic Warrior bases. Bases can target a Symphonic Warrior on field and then increase its level by the number of cards in your hand, right? So that's why I had to showcase this with a five card hand to showcase that you will have two cards in hand by this point, right? These will be any other two cards in hand. So you'll have two cards in hand by this point, which means you increase any monster's level by two. That being said, there is a level three Symphonic Warrior tuner that you could summon that will go into in the next combo, right? But there's a reason why I'm going for basis in this one. So basis becomes level three, and then you get to sync up uh, with three and four to make Symphonic Warrior rocks right so rocks gets to on summon add a pendulum monster from our extra deck back to our hand which is going to be our djj right DJ djj we can then activate again and look at what we have here we have a live pendulum scale look at that now what are we going to do we're going to link off into zealantis right and we're going to use Z the zealantis secret tech bring everything back except we get to bring synthesis back in face down defense now link off into an apple loser right wow <laughs> a fucking negate 20 summons in wow so good right but now djj gets to flip up synthesis because that's not a hard once per turn that's a soft once per turn and there is no once per turn on synthesis except for soft once per turns meaning synthesis can search again so now we're gonna search a Symphonic Warrior Drums, which means we now have enough monsters to completely get back all the resources that we use to make this Apo, right? Because we use four monsters to make it, now Pendulum Summon four. It's too easy, right? Look at who we go for here. We go for Executor of the Underworld Pluto. And I don't believe we showed it off yet today, but this is, be slowly become one of my favorite cards to uh, utilize in flip decks simply because of its generic ability to change any monster on field back to face down, right? So with Borogard, it's really easy to flip monsters up now, but we need more cards that book that book of moon monsters. And there aren't a lot of links that change battle position because they're link monsters, right? They don't worry about battle position. As a level five generic synchro, I can appreciate that this exists because now there is easier ways to change and book our own monsters. So now this actually won't work for this combo <laughs> uh, because we don't actually go Borogard here. We don't have the resources to actually make a Borogard without sacrificing the potential to make a Baron. So between choosing a Borogard or a Baron, I'm gonna choose the Baron. If we really want to go Borogard, we could, simply because of Synthesis Graveyard Effect, right? This card doesn't just resolve its flip effect three times in a turn, it actually has a Graveyard Effect that isn't once per turn either. It can banish itself from the Graveyard and then target one of your banished Symphonic Warriors and summon it back, right? And it's like, wait, how do we banish our Symphonic Warriors? Well, any of the Tuner Symphonic Warriors, right? Drums or basses, they, they do the same thing on field and in graveyard by banishing themselves, right? And even bases says you can remove this from play this card, right? That's how old this stuff is. They remove themselves from play. They don't even say banish on them. They say remove from play. It's had no errata in the past fucking like 14 years. This is like straight out of 2011. It removes itself from play to target a Symphonic Warrior. And then it does the same thing where it increases level based on the number in your hand. Uh, drums normally can declare attribute and change a symphonic warrior to that attribute and then it could banish itself to change an attribute of a face-up symphonic warrior right so they can banish themselves for free right as long as you have a symphonic warrior which we have both rocks and we have mics so drums zzz, and basses can both banish themselves so I decided to go for drums and for basses just to showcase that like you can go for either one, right? There's no real uh, 
We'll play him in the game. Now we get to link off, go into IP, and we can Baron pop our Synthus just so that, you know, we can revive one of our other Symphonic Warriors. If you really wanted to keep the follow-up, you could just keep the Synthus face up. You don't put it face down with Pluto. That way you can keep uh, the Synthus engrave right like you can link off with ip plus the synthesis to make sp little knight and then you have four negates on apo and the gate with baron and then you have sp little knight you have a pendulum scale you have two other cards in hand and you have lots of cards face up in your extra deck you have rocks over here who can revive pendulum cards so you have a pretty good setup over here off of djj and a scorpio it's pretty goaded how much you can do right now sadly None of the Symphonic Warrior support, they don't have their own cool boss monster. I feel like that's the only thing that they're missing. And maybe like a few more searchers, but yeah, we do have to rely on the generic boss monsters, but it's cool, right? We get to utilize pretty much the entire engine and, and end on cool stuff like this. So now we're gonna take Symphonic Warriors to the next level, right? We've seen Orphis Scorpio plus uh, DJ Professor J. Now we are gonna probe. We're going to General Probe, which is a really weird name. And look at fucking Guitarist. Oh my god, that's horrifying. Who drew Guitar Riz like that, man? I don't know. Dude, dude looks like some fucking uncanny, some like, don't hug me, I'm scared character. Where they're doing a musical about playing, playing musical instruments or something. Probe has a really interesting effect. And yes, I will be calling it Probe <laughs> for the rest of this combo. So, each time the effect of a Symphonic Warrior card is activated, you place a Symphonic Counter on that card, uh, on this card when it resolves. Each of the following effects is once per turn, so you can remove three Symphonic Counters to search a Symphonic Warrior monster from deck to hand, right? Cool, more searching. The second effect is if you normal summon or special summon a Symphonic Warrior monster, you can add Sylph Amplifier from your deck to your hand. Now, Sylph Amplifier is the field spell, and... We'll get into why that is important later on, right? So same same thing, right? Ham, hold the sheep. Go into Synthus, Synthus, and DJJ, DJJ, flip up. DJJ, I mean, Synthus trigger, DJJ trigger. Hold the DJJ. Don't use DJJ's on summon effect yet, right? And now we've gotten to search our Sylph Amplifier. Hold on. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Now we've searched our self amplifier, right? So all this is, is the same thing, right? Now you're noticing we're doing our searches a little different, right? So off of General Probe, we use this effect to search Guitarist. And then off of Gear Gigant, instead of searching bases, we get Pia Anno. I fucking hate this name. <laughs> Pia Anno. God, kill me. Uh, so we get to search self amplifier, right? And this is sort of like, uh, you know, like General Probe is like gateway for the deck, right? you're getting counters every time you do something and then you get to search with those counters. Amplifier is kind of like Temple of the Six. It's a lot more gimmicky, but its presence is what is important here. Because as you will come to find out really soon, Guitar R, drop P Pia Anno, go for Mike's. Cross Sheep's gonna trigger, summon out DJJ. DJJ is going to trigger now because it was summoned. And wait a minute, we're summoning a monster face up, what? So, DJJ, if Self Amplifier is on the field, you can summon a Symphonic Warrior from your deck. Instead of summoning it face down, you can summon it face up, but its effects are negated, so. But yeah, like, base, you know, we get to summon any Symphonic Warrior monster from our deck, meaning we have more options as to what we can go for. We don't have to loop the uh, same Synthus two or three times in a row. Now we can just use the one Synthus and use more cards out of our engine to make a proper board. So now we're going for Borgard, we go for Guitarist. Guitarist bounces back to Guitar R. Mike's gets us our second normal summon, Guitar R gets us back our Synthus. And now we're gonna sink into Pluto. Now Pluto's actually gonna come up, right? So Pluto banish a monster and grave, reset our Synthus, synchro into Baron. Borgard, uh, Activate, Synthus Trigger, search us a Symphonic Warrior, right? So last time we had to go into Rocks to get back our DJJ. And now we get to just search DJ Professor J with our Synthus. So Probe gets more triggers and now we go into Zealantis, right? And you understand why this is important, right? Because our boy DJJ here can flip up Synthus again. 
meaning we get more cards to hand. Don't you just love this shit? Now Pia Anno gets to target um, our any one of our Symphonic Warriors change its typing. And, you know, I do think, like, if you are going to go for a Synchro Climb variant of Symphonic Warrior, you could, you know, utilize the typings and the attributes to your advantage, I think, somehow. If, if you want to get more into complex Symphonic Warrior theory and, like, combo routes. Obviously, I'm just the fucking messenger. I'm not really the fucking Symphonic Warrior goddamn master over here yet but you know it does seem like there are ways for you to utilize these like attributes and typings to your advantage maybe for certain cards that may out you from things or maybe give you access to more negates i'm not sure it definitely has potential to do something in the future i can tell you that i can tell you that much so boom link off into ip why are we linking off into ip now well we need the link arrows we go Guitar Riz, we go Mics, Drums, Guitar R, and we get to sync up into Rocks. Now, here's the cool thing, right? So, Mics can actually summon itself from hand by removing... by removing Symphonic Counters from our field, meaning we now get double the benefit of utilizing these probes and self-amplifier to get us more extenders. As a matter of fact, if we have the ability to search one more time, we can get a second Guitar Riz, and Guitar Riz could summon itself from hand while you have the some amplifier in your field zone, and then you can bounce a card in your pendant zone back to hand as well, meaning you could potentially bounce a DJJ, and if you have a way to set self-amplifier again, you could flip it back up. So that's it's actually pretty cool like how deep into the sauce you can go. Now, what I just did here is I removed some some of the um, counters from self amplifier because now that we have we've been we've just been activating and summoning and activating and summoning for like the entire turn. This thing had like you know uh, like nine ten counters on it, and it could it could remove counters from anywhere on your field, right? So if you have probe and uh, amplifier out at the same time, which most likely you will, because I think the proper ratio is three probe, one amplifier. You can remove five counters to inflict 300 for each Symphonic Warrior card on your field. Now, obviously, amplifier and probe don't count, but you know, when you have like stuff in the pendulum zone, um, and you know, other monsters on field, you know, you could inflict up to like 1500, you know, uh, 18, even touching over 2000, depending on what your board looks like. So it could be a really interesting way to win in time, especially since we had to pay the 1k to go for the instant fusion. Um, being able to inflict over, you know, like 1200 or more could, you know, put us ahead off of, um, off of the opponent. So cool way to win in time. If you can banish seven counter, I mean, if you could remove seven counters, this is really great for going second. You get to banish cards your opponent controls or in their graveyard up to the number of Symphonic Warriors on field. So if you have like four or five Symphonic Warriors, that can be like a game changing activation. Now, clearly this is, I have no information on how fragile this stuff is to hand traps or to interruption. And I can't say for sure if you'll still be gaming as hard. If, if anything here gets interrupted, it does seem linear and fragile, but at the very least it's possible. And I think that's what's most important, right? When we were cheering on Jeff L playing Exodia last year, he had like the Ignite Exodia deck where he loops Celine like two or three times to get all the pieces to hand using the Blue Dragon Summoner. We we were cheering him on. We we didn't care that the deck lost to like one or two interruptions. We just fucking like, oh shit, this guy's summoning e e Exodia in 2023. Like this guy is, you know, gaming. And I feel like that's the same way that I look at Symphonic Warriors now. We're making a lot of the best generic boss monsters, right? And this is a somewhat stronger setup uh, simply because, right, we have IP, we have Pia Anno, we have Probe with four counters, so we'll get a guaranteed search next turn. We have Sub Amplifier with over seven counters, so, you know, whatever they summon, if they don't get rid of this card, their board's getting banished, right? And so we have IP here to link off into something like an Appalooza, right? And if we put Appalooza into this other extra monster zone, there will be three monsters on our field that are co-linked, which means they can't just swing over into SP 
Zealantis is going to clear their field, right? If they try to do that on top of us having multiple negates and then being able to pendulum summon back out our monsters next turn. And yeah, I'm really liking just how much the game has, how far the game has come in terms of like what flip monsters can do for the game, you know? Because if you think about it, flip monsters are just like worse trap cards. They're slower trap cards because at least trap cards after your turn, they're speed spell too, they're quick effects. They can react to things. What can a flip monster do except sit there and wait for your opponent to attack into it? It takes two whole turns for a for this kind of monster to be useful by normal game mechanics. So the fact that like we can even tune up and speed up these kind of cards in the game, I think is a testament to how interesting and diverse the game could be. Do I think flip decks are gonna take over the game? Not anytime soon, nor do I believe that the Magical Merchant stuff is going to be widespread. I just think it's an interesting approach to deck building, it, but I don't think a lot of this these techs are gonna be widespread. They will simply be another way to play the game. And I think that's fine. I think that's fine. I think people should, I, I believe in the ability for people to choose what they want to play rather than being told and force fed like this is the meta this is what you have to use i hope you guys are ready for our final combo of the day in this combo i want to utilize one of the strongest flip monsters or the strongest flip monster i think after doing a bit of research besides guard dog i think there is one flip monster that stands out above the rest and i'm gonna show it to you right now as you can see all we have is Orpha Scorpio, so this combo line will be the one flip plus a Beauregard. And that is Scape Ghost. I mentioned it earlier, and I kind of like hinted at it in some of the other replays, but this I think is the apex of what a flip deck should be able to do in 2024. So Beauregard flip up Scape Ghost. Immediately. How fucking busted is this? Four tokens for free? Cool. Formula. Draw. Samsara. Shamsian Samsara Sorrow Cat is, is a really cool synchro uh, climb card because not only is it a level three synchro tuner, but it can revive itself from graveyard by shuffling other synchros from your graveyard back into deck allowing you not just follow up in terms of bodies on field, but to also increase your follow up game by returning your resources back to the graveyard. So it's a really interesting uh, card for uh, synchro climbing. And uh, it also has a quick effect to synchro if you leave it on field during your opponent's turn, right? So that's cool, right? Cupid pitch, right? So Cupid pitch has to manipulate its level to make itself increase or decrease by the level of the tuner. Uh, Samsara is a level three, so Cupid Pitch will increase by three levels, making it level seven. And then we can use seven plus one to go into Axel Synchro. Cupid Pitch is mandatory, so it's always gonna trigger Chainlink one, and then Axel Synchro is gonna be Chainlink two. Summon back Scape Ghost, two is a level one tuner, right? Cool. Now Cupid Pitch gets to burn equal to the Synchro Monster's level, which in this case is 800. And then after that, it gets to add a level eight or lower monster with 600 defense if you've any done any synchro climb deck or if you played around the Hulk Aurora Dawn format you probably remember this card pretty well and now we get to go for our green ninja and here's a cool thing green nigga <laughs> green nigga green ninja triggers the way that this works right so uh, green ninja triggers when a monster special into your field face up and in the same way where when you use the fire king field spell you pop a monster to search Garunix. Garunix gets to trigger in hand, even though it wasn't there when the monster was destroyed. Green Ninja will also trigger because even though it wasn't there when the monster was summoned, this is still the resolution, the response window to the summon of a monster, right? Because Scape Ghost was summoned during the last chain link, meaning Green Ninja will be able to trigger. Like if you had a Torrential Tribute or something, this would be the timing that it activates in, which means Green Ninja is all well and dandy to trigger here. And what Green Ninja will do is that it will summon itself and then it can book and moon the monster that was summoned. So boom, and then we're just gonna immediately link it off. Who cares? It's just a Green Ninja and an Axel Synchro, you know, what's the big deal? 
so two things here, right? So, um, Sprine triggers, right? And then Green Ninja triggers, because when it's sent from hand or fields of graveyard, you can change the battle position of a monster into either face up attack or into face down defense, meaning we get to flip up Scapeghost again. Two, two Scapeghost flips in the same turn. Now, you're going to see me with Sprite Sprine mill a crawler. And what, the reason why we're milling a crawler here is because we have, we still have Master of Ham in our graveyard. And the reason why that's going to be important is Master of Ham has to banish two flips to bring itself back. And as I've showcased before, if you can bring back a Master of Ham, you can get any flip monster from deck. So now we've, we're have we building up our board, we're building up resources, but we still want to have access to follow up and, and other flips. So by getting that second uh, flip in Grave, we're allowing ourselves access back. We're turning back on our Master of Ham for next turn. So now we Scape Ghost because it was flipped face up by Green Ninja. Summon him out three tokens now, not not two. Uh, Link Karibo, we go SP. And w I had to do it this way because if I didn't summon SP here, I would not have the Link Arrows to summon out SP plus another Link monster, right? Like if I would have summoned IP here, I would not have been able to summon out SP in this zone. It's only because SP points left and right that I'm able to summon IP here. And now we get to go Master of Hand, banish our two flips, right? Our Scape Ghost and our uh, Crawler Dendrite. And then we get to go Samsara, shuffle back our uh, Axel Synchro, and summon out Samsara. He's like, okay, Nistro, well, this seems like a half-decent field, but what can we actually do with this? And I'll tell you what we can do. So, we are going to wait till their main phase again, right? Because this is IP Masquerina. Let's just wait till main phase to make this work, right? It's not even like we could flip a Master of Ham preemptively, right? Our board is full. So, main phase, they they activate anything. You go Borogard flip, and then you go IP. Now, what are you gonna IP Masquerina into? Well, it's like, well, you could go into Appalooza to negate stuff. And it's like, yeah, you could. But we went into a second Borogard. And why did we go into a second Borogard? Right? If you're paying attention, you know, Borogard is not hard once per turn. It's a soft once per turn. Meaning, we get to go Borogard multiple times. Now, let's say they have a Imperm or something for Master of Ham. Samsar can Quick Synchro during our opponent's turn. So what does Quick Synchro mean? Quick Synchro, this is a level 3 tuner, a level 5 non-tuner. And it's funny... Because they're both banished because they're summoned back from the graveyard by their own effects and they're both banished when they leave field, so they both so they go to the banished zone together like they were made for each other. And they and they make Axel Synchro. And you're like, Nitro, Axel Synchro didn't do anything last turn. Like, what is it gonna do this turn? Uh well. We're gonna flip a Borgard guard to get our dog guard dog, and then we're gonna get Formula Synchron! Nice! That formula we made at the very beginning of last turn, it comes up. It comes up now. And now uh, we, we have flipped up the guard dog. And, uh, you know, even if they had something like Imperm for guard dog's trigger, we still have SP to banish, to protect. And, yeah. I just really love this combo just because it's very, very simple to start. You know? I feel like with a lot of the other combos, it's, it's like you need to have another card from this engine, from that engine... Here we're just using, you know, flip monsters and generic stuff to make the most out of what what is like a single scape ghost, right? Anything that goes plus five is going to go crazy, but you know, for years this card has existed in the game of Yu-Gi-Oh, and no one has really been able to utilize it because it's a it's a flip monster. Now that we get to dig for it and then be like, okay, Borogard, now it's just a fucking it's a token generator, and it's crazy that, like, how much we, uh, advantage we get to generate off of Scapeghost. And not just Scapeghost, but also, you know, the Symphonic Warrior advantage we were able to generate off of that, and cool stuff like that. So, I really do love this combo, and I love playing this style of, this style of combo deck where it's, like, very maxing the most you can get off of a single card. It just feels good, I don't know in my opinion, to pull off a combo like this. Now, half of these combos I showed off today take like, would probably take like five to 10 minutes, like IRL <laughs> to pull off, uh, simply just due to how many activations and how many cards you have to like manage. 
it, it may be hard to bring a deck like this to a tournament just because of its like sort of linear nature and and the amount of like extra deck that you run through just to fucking make like baron plus sp plus guard dog basically <laughs> but it's still a really enjoyable bit of a combo to to watch and even seeing green ninja swoop in you know like i was really saddened to see that like there's only like three ninja flip monsters and like none of them are really good but the fact that green ninja can be utilized in our list simply because of cupid pitch i'm happy ninjas are able to like put their two cents in as well in this combo line and then sprined you know coming in to save us from to to, to save the master of ham from you know being stuck in graveyard is another great accomplishment as well and then getting the second re resolution of scape ghost we didn't go zealantis here uh there is a possibility that we could have like linked off uh these tokens when zealantis reset scapegoat and probably made another Borgard, guard but at that point i don't know if it, if the token generating would have been worth it i don't even think we would have had enough extra deck monsters to really like keep on making monsters with we 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 used a quite a significant amount just to synchro climb into here so it kind of gets to the point where like you have more resource than you need to make whatever board that you like um in a way so it's kind of cool i really do like scape ghost as a card and i'm really happy we were, we were able to utilize it to its full potential here now addressing the criticism criticism from last time about deck list right because we have multiple variants of flip monsters there are multiple lists that we have to play here. So here is just a generic flip deck using the uh, Predator Plant support, right? So we still have our Crawler Soma here. We have Lone Fire, or for Scorpio, Small World. Soma I've cut down to two. I don't think it needs to be a three. Book of Tayo in case you hard open Scape Ghost. A Spore for the Lone Fire. Whirlwind Weasel and Guard Dog. To be honest, you don't need to play both in the same list. You only get to go for one every turn anyways. We have our Crawler Level 2s in case we open Soma. We have our Green Ninja. Karma Cannons, which are cuttable, personally. Uh, these are kind of just here, just because. Uh, without, like, Convertible, I don't think these are that good anyway. But these are really cool just for being able to, like, Book of Moon monsters. Or Book of Moon your own monsters. Unfortunately, your Borg Guard cannot survive this. And then we see our, uh, Called By, Crossouts, and then Hand hand Traps or Crossout. You can cut down some of the names. Like, if you need to fit in more Hand Traps, you can cut down on, on the Karma Cannons. And that also gives you access to more Hand Traps. Also, cool thing, Nib only tributes face-up monsters on field. So if you set one pass with Nib, you only tribute their monsters if if you decide to resolve Nibiru. And yeah, a uh, rough time reviver emitter is, is is a cool one. I think could go well with Sprind. I don't know exactly what kind of u utilizations we can make with this card, but it does seem pretty interesting. Uh, convertible still here. Resonant Insect. I tried to make it work with Soma. It just I don't know by itself it just doesn't work there was a time where i was testing metal marcher to revive the scape ghost early the issue was is that we could not make pluto plus scape ghost while going through cupid pitch like we we couldn't get through cupid pitch to make pluto that was the biggest issue like we can go directly into pluto and like like without cupid pitch it's very hard to actually make to make the pluto worth it and I also don't believe we went into Pluto in this combo line. I don't think it's necessary in this variant of uh, Flip, but I, d I do think it's just a good, a cool card to keep around. Soul and Luna, great for going second, I think, uh, being able to flip your opponent's monsters and, or being able to flip your own and like Book of Moon your opponent's monsters is pretty interesting. Heat Wave is another interesting one. So it's a, it's a tactic that's gaining popularity lately because you Heat Wave during your turn and uh, like let's say you're going first, you heat wave during your turn. You can still normal set, you just can't normal summon. So you normal set, let's say a flip monster. Your opponent can't play for the turn. All they can do is normal set as well. And then it comes back to your turn and now everyone's allowed to summon monsters. So you can, you know, go full combo and, you know, hopefully your opponent is not able to play the game simply because uh, all they had was like monsters and, and stuff. So it basically starts you back to turn one except you have a battle phase it's like turn one with a battle phase if you resolve heat wave uh going first so triple imperm and then there's a bunch of field spells that we were looking at simply because uh summoner of illusion could summon out the earthbound kraken so because this is on special summon it adds any field spell uh 
you can go summoner of illusion into this search any field spell in the game and i was trying to see like what were some of the best field spells in the game that a flip deck could use and there weren't that many i don't think hidden city is worth all the trouble of going through with summoner of illusion so there weren't like many field spells that were like worth the trouble that i went through to get them you know what i'm saying so I was like, yeah, maybe it's just not worth running. Maybe in a future video, though, maybe maybe there's a newer field spell or one that I, you know, just straight up missed. You know, maybe that could work here, too. Also, uh, Caddy Corn, when we go cross sheep after starting with Lone Fire and we revived a Lone Fire, Lone Fire could revive, uh, Lone Fire contributes summon Caddy Corn. Caddy Corn can search any field spell. And now that means that that's why these were here, actually. Not not because of that. It's, it's really interesting, like, uh, what you can do with this deck. And I really do like the nine starters. It, it, it's a really good, consistent number. Just pray you don't draw a Cobra and you are good to go. A more Symphonic Warrior base build. You got your Lone Fires, your Orphan Scorpios. You got your Small Worlds. You got Triple DJJ, Triple Guitar R, Triple Synthes. And you got your one-ups of, like, everything else. You can maybe put Guitars up to two. Maybe put Mics up to two. But I feel like this is like the bare minimum of like what you need. Uh, hand trap space, uh, not non-engine space. I don't even think you need Book of Tayos in this deck, if I'm being honest. Uh, they can kind of just go to the side because DJJ does the same thing. You could maybe even play a super heavy package in this in this deck, you know, if you really want to search for stuff. Um, and then you, you have heat waves again because it's just interesting. Uh, Soul and Luna, and then you have cross outs for, you know, potentially stopping your opponent from playing the game or from hand trapping you so that you can stop them from playing the game. Don't even need guard dog in this list, which I think is like the best part. This is very much a more interactive deck rather than trying to just lock your opponent out of a turn. Symphonic Warrior is very interactive, and I feel like we have yet to see or explore the full potential of this archetype. Now the Tendangle list, Scapegoat is still here, although it doesn't need to be here if I'm being completely honest with you. But yeah, we got our plants and then we got our Herleth, Protector. Trinity is the one that I think is cuttable uh, because it only really works if you go for the Link Summon and the Tendangle Link is just not good. It's just not good. It just doesn't feel good to use and just, I don't know. It just feels like I'm getting shammed when I go for this. Uh, we do have the triple Beauregard because uh, we do need to flip up our monsters as much as possible. You could cut Beauregard down to two, I think, actually. Uh, but we have uh, the guard dog, the fucking MVP here. We have the Delaunay. We probably don't need this one as well. I did play convertible um, just because I thought it was really easy to get to in my variant of the deck. Right? like in the combo it's very easy to get into convertible but i figured like it's just easier to set pot of the forbidden straight from deck just so um you have immediate access to it because if you're trying to go for a convertible and then you you know you don't have that extra flip or a card that lets you flip during your opponent's turn then it would have just been better to go for out of the forbidden from the beginning i do think you could play the rest of all incarnation with the shadow in this list i don't know if that's here here's the thing about the tendangle support right so the monsters are fine right so hound doesn't i mean it is a flip monster but it doesn't actually do anything it just gains attack which i you know cool if you want to go for game but look the only one with tendangle in the name is Delaunay. Steroids of Mail is really interesting, right? Because it gets to be a constant card that flips up and down fit, uh, defense mission monsters as long as you have other Tendangle cards to discard. Kind of like King's Sarcophagus for flip monsters. And it just... I don't know. It just doesn't feel good because it's like, how am I supposed to utilize this? Meanwhile, there's no card to search the Tendangles directly. I feel like that's what the deck should need. It needs like more cards that directly get us into Tindangles from deck and more cards that can bring us out Tindangles from uh, the different areas from like uh, hand deck or grave. I mean, I guess, I guess grave were, were covered if you think about it really, but he brings himself out from grave. Doles brings out a different one from graveyard. So you kind of got grave covered. It's just, uh, I don't know, just digging for the 
Crossing the angle cards can be a bit tedious at times and I wish there was an easier way to dig into them. Especially like with cards like Stairs of Mail, you know, make the searchable protection. This card doesn't even do anything. It just stops them from being destroyed by battle or, or, or by card effects. But, and yeah, it, it doubles damage, but like, I don't know. They, they, they kind of want you to mill with doles, but doles can't summon itself from graveyard, right? Like you, you need to be able to flip up doles to mill some of these cards, which Stairs of Milk doesn't even like search itself. It's only like Nigel Protection and like the Eula Circuit. And the fact that the Link does nothing unless you have base card is like crazy. But I'm sure there's there's some more potential here. I just don't see this working in the list as the way the list is now. Maybe if Tindangles had a more pure variant, you could play some of this stuff, even Stairs of Mail. But as the way the deck is now, I just don't think you have the space for all this stuff. Uh, it just doesn't seem strong enough to like make the space for it so i was genuinely surprised like this is the most competent flip archetype i think behind shadow i think subterror has a stronger game plan but i think there's more support that's usable in tendangle than there is in subterror like a lot of the subterror support is just plain unusable right like other than hidden siri guru fiendus and the link is like that's really it whereas like tendangles have like five or six different cards that like you can use maybe not as three ofs but like at least they're usable in a list oh yeah we got the visa stuff sorry for the no cross out space um but yeah but yeah i was looking at other you know higher level tuners and i was like yeah i don't know like we'd have to make the ultimaya really early like when we search the scareclaw arrival to really get the full effect of it but I don't know if, if we would have like the space or like the line to actually make that work. I don't know if that's possible. I, I didn't decide to get that much into it, but I was just like, I just did the one combo. I saw that it worked. I was like, fuck it. Let, let's do the cheap, cheap, cheap combo. You know, get into visas from a fucking flip monster. That'll show them. And yeah, there's probably a, like a bunch of other lists. Uh, there's even a penguin deck I was working on. Which I won't show this time, just because I feel like penguins still need more work. They could use a little more work, but it's definitely possible. Pengu is a possibility. Um, here's a little another one, kind of a little more based on Scapeghost. A more Scapeghost uh, variant list. This time with the horse and the Soma. Um, just because horse and Soma are good follow-up, it's just you have too many normal summons sometimes, right? So instead of the like small world, we have like Soma and Horse, we have Escape Ghost, we have Book of Tayo, we have Soul Luna, we have the Heat Wave, we have Imperms. So yeah, um, that has been the evolution of Flip Monsters. I have been your boy Nistro. Thank you all for the you know warm support that I've been receiving from you guys lately, and uh, you know. Let me know what other flip monsters you guys may want to see, what other flip decks you, you guys want to see, what, what hasn't been covered yet. Um, I guess I didn't, I don't have a list with the prediction princess stuff yet. I think that's what I'm going to work on next, like making the prediction princess stuff like stronger. Just because I feel like at the moment it just isn't strong enough. Uh, just because like you're dealing with a lot of high level monsters and it's like not being able to summon those monsters like directly without needing like a ritual spell is like a big ask for a deck that already relies on a subpar mechanic like flip monsters <laughs> so um we'll see we'll see now that's been all for now this has been your boy nisho here signing out